Body shot when you're down there. Oh! What's up, guys? Welcome to Lens Sunday Boxing. So today we're going to break down Emmanuel Navarrete's infamous left uppercut. There's that left lead upper. So right off the bat, we can see that um, Navarrete loves to move left. 90% of the fight, he's moving to the left. Due to the fact that he's moving left, his left hand is automatically closer to his opponent. Because Navarrete forces the fight to the left side, his opponent always has to make always has to worry about either a left body shot, left uppercut, or left hook. The only thing is that you can't you can't you can't comp, you can't block all three of those shots, right? You're always gonna leave yourself open for one of the three. We'll see how it plays out during this fight against the mobile fighter like Christopher Diaz. Disputed junior welterweight championship on the line. Two belts for Ramirez, two belts for Taylor. They're going to collide on ESPN from Vegas on May 22nd. That's a dynamic fight coming. Certain speed that he comes forward, and when he wants to mount an attack, he'll start to duck and start to pick up his feet and start to look like he wants to do something. Diaz is seeing that a mile away, and he's either... He makes a move. He's thinking about defense afterwards because Navarrete, he will attack you after you work some offense. Doing right now, he came out moving and then he realized, well, wait a second, I don't have to move that much, at least not. Right elbow. Tried to time a right hand over the top. Navarrete so awkward, so unorthodox with his approach. Navarrete fights like, you know, he's on a different station, you know, radio station. Navarrete constantly dips his head to the left side in order to either load his, his left hand or get out of the way of his opponent's right hand. Opens up with a wide sweeping left hand to close out round. 44 year old, mm. long time. Tay's not going to just lay down. You're going to have to go through some fire if you want to get this one. You know, I talked about Navarrete tipping himself off. He'll have a. Hey, let's go, let's go. Not only does his opponent have to, to, to worry about the left hands of Navarrete, he also has to worry about the right hand as he steps to the left uh, with, while he throws his right hand. In the right distance and range, and then countering when Navarrete... Ooh. The left hand to the body, just underneath that. Countering or getting out of harm's way. Pedro Navarrete told me that he wants Emmanuel to start cutting off the exits and pick up his work rate to break down Christopher Diaz. Finds his opponent, Diaz off balance, and he immediately... But Diaz should have known that there was going to be moments like this. A championship fight. Remember that? There it is. What you're supposed to do when you're facing an awkward fighter, you don't get... That's what he's doing. Now he's picking up the... Day. Yeah, that's vintage Navarrete right there. And then he... Navarrete throws a variation of punches and he usually uses the same setup. So you never really know which punch is going to come next. So it's always a surprise. That's how he's able to land his left uppercut. On top of that, the left uppercut is a, is a shot that's very, very difficult to, to defend against because you don't really see the punch coming. When someone dips to the left, you tend, you, you tend to think that they would show, throw a left body shot or a left hook to the head. So, you, so a, a natural boxer's instinct will be to block the left hook or the left body shot, which leaves him right, right open for a left uppercut. And Navarrete has mastered this punch. And you can see here in the final clip, Navarrete dips to the left while he feints the right hand in order to land that left uppercut, which Diaz never saw coming because he thought it was probably going to be a left hook, a left body shot, or he thought that, that Navarrete was going to throw that right hand to the body. Right, so he left. He left. He left the, the the middle part of his of his guard wide open, leaving Navarrete, letting Navarrete land that left uppercut. So that's it, guys. I hope you guys like this film study. Leave a comment if you have any questions. Like the video, subscribe. I'll see you guys next time.